talking about chart patterns or the most important patterns that will help you earn profit and understand the markets. Now, in tonight's class, I'm going to use the term security. I'm also going to use the term stocks, bonds. I may say commodities. I may say CFDs. I might say Forex. I might say cryptocurrency. But when I do, I'm just trying to, to make it more interesting for you because just to keep saying asset, 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 or security, 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 I just get boring. So I, I kind of jump back and forth. But regardless of which one I'm saying, what we're talking about tonight applies to all assets that are traded in the open financial markets. I also will mix up the terms investing and trading. Now, because most of us are here through investing.com and we're looking at trading CFDs, we're short-term traders. We're not investors. Investing is a longer-term position or somebody who's looking to put something away for retirement or buy something for a long-term move. The terms aren't really interchangeable, but they are. But it also gets very tiring saying it, trading, trading, trading. So I might jump back and forth to in trading, to investing, trading, to investing. But the fact is, chart patterns help you no matter what type of investing or trading you're going to do. Now, secondly, chart patterns fall in the scope of what's called technical analysis. Because anything that we do on charts is considered technical analysis. Now, if you're coming to tonight's class because you're asking, you want to know, or you want some magical way to know, should I buy today? What will prices be an hour from now, tomorrow, next week, next year? Okay. Well, would it be easy, investing easy, if we knew the answer to these seemingly simple questions? But I don't have a Ouija board or a crystal ball. And alas, if you're attending to this class, in the hopes that technical analysis has the answer to those questions, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. It doesn't. But if you're attending this webinar with the hopes that technical analysis and price patterns will improve your investing and trading, I have good news for you. It sure will. So technical analysis refers to the study of financial markets based on price movement. It uses the assumption that the price of a share or an asset reflects all the information about that asset, including the market sentiment, as well as a perceived value. So technical analysts believe that everything and anything that can affect that asset is already factored into the price. Now, charting refers to technical analysis that is performed through careful inspection of price on charts. Now, a lot of us could, and I, I don't even like the term technical analysis, it could simply be called chart analysis. And it'll sound less scary than all of this stuff. You know, we have technical indicators, we have chart patterns, we have all different kinds of things that are done on charts. And the whole field of technical analysis is done on charts. And you know what? This entire field of technical analysis, whether it is looking at moving averages, whether you're using complex moving indicators, whether you're using you know, Japanese candlesticks, whether you, you know, God knows what you could be using, it all comes down to being done on a chart. So it could just be less scary by calling it chart analysis. Now, one of the best ways to interpret price is through the identification of well-known patterns that, em that emerge in price, for example, head and shoulders, channels, triangles, and wedges. Now, tonight, predominantly, we're going to be talking about triangles because they are the most popular and they're the most reliable and they're ones that most of us use. Head and shoulders are quite popular, too, and are very, very reliable. When we come to things like channels and wedges, okay, uh, they're not as much a wedge is similar to a triangle except the lines move slightly different ways but the interpretation is still the same same thing in a channel so we can see over here on the right hand side we have triangles we have wedges which don't look that much different and we have channels and head and shoulders is exactly what it is it depicts 
the left, the right shoulder, the neck, and the head of a person. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And it's a very reliable reversal signal. So these are a few of the patterns that are very reliable in the marketplace. We have flags, we have pennants, we have all kinds of things. Now, chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on the psych psychological phenomena that occur between buyers and sellers of financial instruments and liquid markets. Pattern formations do not form a trading system, but rather provide an indication of future trends of an asset as it breaks key psychological barriers in the form of support and resistance lines. There are numerous types of patterns, all named according to the shapes that the graph, price graph form between support and resistance lines. The general types include triangles, channels, wedges, and head and shoulders. So triangles are the most popular. Triangles are my favorite for trading. Now, we have what's called symmetrical triangles, ascending triangles, and descending triangles. A triangle is formed between converging support and resistance lines. A negative sloping resistance line indicates a reducing level of profit taking or certainly or uncertainty more about the value of an asset. With a positive sloping support line, the price line are squeezed into a corner. And this is what it is with, with triangles, price is being squeezed into this corner or this apex. At some point, as the buyers and sellers get squeezed in there, they're going to break out. Now, it can break down or it can break up. When we get the breakout, we can then make some important decisions. Now, a descending triangle usually forms in downtrends, where an ascending triangle usually forms in uptrends. But they're still triangles, and I still just use the general rules of triangles. When I see a triangle form, okay, then I can make some decisions. Now, that's a lot of words and a lot of hog, you know, not a hogwash, but it's a lot of words to perceive. So I've got a prepared presentation for you on triangles and how you would actually put these on your charts and how you can find them. So hold on, let me share that with you. Oh, by the way, before we go over there, if you notice on your screen, there are two handouts I put together. There's the guide to chart patterns where I, everything I'm saying to you tonight, I've explained to you in detail in that handout, giving you examples and everything else, put it together so that you have, you don't have to gleam everything I'm saying to you tonight. You'll get it in that, in that handout. Now you must download that handout in the live class. It's not available anywhere else at any other time. If you don't, you can't download during the recorded version and there's nobody to send it to you. So what you'd have to do is wait till we present this class again to get it. So please click on that little download button and download it now to whatever device you're using. You can move it around later. It's in a PDF format. You can move it around all you want. I've also given you the Introduction to Technical Analysis ebook from investing.com, which is a very extensive book that will take you through all the parts of technical analysis and spends a good deal on charts and chart patterns so that you have a very good understanding of these So and, and also all technical analysis. So please click on those download buttons and download them now. Like I said, you can download them whatever device you're using and then move them to where you can you get them later. And they are all locked up in PDF format. So please take advantage of them at this moment.
So that shows you a general look at triangles and how you would look at them. Now we're going to look at them on live charts. And in fact, let me pop up a chart, a real live chart for you at the moment. And I think I have one with. Okay, so here we have a perfect, this is a live chart. And this is gold currently in the markets on gold in a one hour chart. And you can see the formation here on my chart of the triangle. Our support line, which is run under the price, our resistance line over top. And I'm going to, I have a presentation to show you exactly how you would draw these support and resistance line. But here we got, here we had the breakout. I see we saw as we got pushed into the break, the, the, um, into the apex of the triangle, buyers finally made a decision and they broke out and they broke down. And this is our projection line. This is our take profit level. This is where we'd be taking, placing our stop loss. And so now we're waiting for gold. We, we, we would have already entered a sell position with gold and we're going to wait for it to come down here. So it came down, retest and move back up and it's still moving in a very nice down or beginning of a well-developed downtrend. And we should be able to pick up some nice profit here. But this is simply from trading with a triangle. There is nothing else involved here. This was the apex of the difference. Okay. And here we go. So let me share with you a short presentation on how you would actually find and see a triangle or a pattern developing on your charts.
So now you should all be experts on trading triangles. Now, that's only a joke, but learning triangles isn't very difficult. It isn't, it just takes a little bit of time to learn to recognize them and see them on your charts. And triangles are one of the most popular trading patterns. And again, the triangle doesn't tell you necessarily the direction. It tells you to watch for the breakout. And then you have certain things you can do because that breakout will carry certain momentum. And you can use it to set your stop loss, your take profit points, your risk management. You can use everything based on the size of the triangle. So you saw all the formulas and the same formula holds true for rectangles and wedge, rectangles and channels, which to me are just, they're straight lines instead of the two meeting lines. And you have up channels and down channels. And again, there is just a pr the formation of the support and resistance lines, or we could call them actually trend lines, but they don't follow the exact same rules of trend lines. But the, the, the line above and below price, if they're converging together, they're forming a triangle or a wedge. If they're running parallel, they're forming a channel or up and down or a rectangle. And the most common like wedges or triangles are found when breakouts are in the opposite direction. So there is a bearish breakout in a rising wedge and a bullish breakout in a falling wedge. Now, one of the most unique patterns that you hear about a lot is called the head and shoulders, which is much different than the other types of patterns because this is not formed by converging support and resistance lines. A head and shoulders pattern is a reversal pattern. It's telling you the current trend is over and is is at this point reversing. Now a head and shoulders is exactly what it sounds like. It's the left shoulder, the right shoulder, then the head and the neckline of a person. So a head and shoulders pattern describes a price movement that depicts the head and shoulders of a person. The head and shoulders is a reversal pattern from bullish to bearish trend. But then we also have the inverse head and shoulders which is the, the a person standing on their head. And that's just the exact opposite. It's a moving from a bearish trend to a bullish trend. Now, the, the, the pattern is basically a triple top, except the center top is higher than the two previous tops. So what's happened is when price is moving in an uptrend, it will form and you won't even notice and it doesn't make a difference. You don't need to realize you've got a head and shoulders pattern all the way down here until it's at the very end. So you have all the time in the world to actually see it. But price is moving up and it hits a resistance line and comes back down and forms a support level or forms a bottom here. Jumps up, bounces off of this bottom of the support line and moves back up and hits a higher resistance level and bounces off, but comes back down to that same support line. This is what forms what we call the neckline. Okay. It then bounces off of there and comes back up to almost, or pretty much almost, the same resistance line and bounces off of there. When it comes back down and until it breaks that neckline, you're not sure what to do. When, once it breaks that neckline, it's telling you that that current trend, this uptrend that it was forming in is over. And to enter the market in a bearish position. Now, there's all kinds of rules about how high the head has to be from the shoulders, how even the shoulders be. My definition of it is it is a head and shoulders of a person. You have people with long necks. You have people with short necks. You have people that are hunched over and have a higher shoulder and a, round, you know, a lower shoulder. You have people that have rounded shoulders. You have people that have long necks and high heads or round heads and oval heads, high hair and low hair. So I don't follow the rules of how high the head has to be from the shoulders. And there's no firm rule. 
There's all kinds of things. 10% higher, 15, 82% higher. All, as long as the head is higher than the shoulders, you have the head formation here. What is important is the neckline, which is a support line. The price bounced off of it twice. And the shoulders should form almost at the same resistance line. Now, this resistance line could be slightly on an angle because, like I said, some people have a lower left shoulder and a higher right shoulder. Some people are hunched over a little bit. But it needs to form this pattern. But when we're dealing with reality, it's kind of hard to see it. So the more precise you want to make this, the less you're ever going to be able to notice it. Because in this, what we're looking at here is a beautiful formation of a head and shoulders. We have price move up here, breaks the support line, moves up and hits the resistance line, bounces off of it, bounces off and forms the head, comes back down to that same resistance line, which is slightly angled, but at this point, it's now formed the neckline. Now, this person happens to have very broad shoulders. This price eventually bounced back up, hit that same resistance line here, came back down to that neckline, and broke the neckline. Now, it's not picture perfect because price is never picture perfect. So it's never going to look like my sketch. It's going to look like this. But once you got this and you had these support and resistance lines on here and you had basically a triple top, double is a triple top, hits the top, comes back down, forms, it's just the center top is higher, comes back down, forms that top again and comes back and breaks that neckline. You have now a beautiful head and shoulders pattern that you can trade from. Now, this is where we're going to get into some very simple formulas. Now, you saw and how you measured the profit and the take profit and the stop loss points and the momentum and the triangle uh, presentation. Well, it's for all of the patterns. It's a pretty easy calculation. And to calculate your take profit points to start figuring out your way how to trade a head and shoulders, is first you see your established neckline. And again, here we're using a sketch, so we have a pretty, well, you know, easy one to look at. Okay, We take T, which is your target price, which is when it breaks here with the sell signal, where it's going to go to here. And the target price is equal to the neckline, which is whatever price that neckline formed on, Minus the head is the height of this head, the price that this head was at. Minus the neckline. Once we have that, we can then drop that on our charts for our target point. We got our sell signal when it broke the neckline on the right when it finished making the right hand shoulder and you would have sold at this level this would have been your target level and you would have probably placed your stop loss at the high above the right shoulder and just the opposite is true for an inverse head and shoulders but then we go on to a pattern that's quite popular out there that I ignore entirely. And these are multiple tops and multiple bottoms. The first one is a double top and double bottom. Okay. To me, especially if you're CFD, Forex, short-term trading, you see this happen all the time. Price bounce up and hit the resistance line, fall back down, support line bounce back up, comes back, and then it goes all over the place. Price is moving fairly significantly and quickly. Okay. When price hits the same bottom or the same top twice, it's happened so often that it's it's not even worth looking at. Okay. But this is a double top or double bottom. 
but the breakouts and the important information is not significant enough. And you'll make it's a 50 50 chance you'll make it right or wrong. But then we go to the triple top and the triple bottom. Now, all this is is one more move, but this is where you get the confirmation. This is when price is moving up in an uptrend, hits a support line, hits a resistance line, bounces off, and comes back to the support line, goes back to that resistance line, comes off, and comes back down to that support line, goes back to that same resistance line, and then it comes back to, but then it breaks that resistance line. So this is telling you this comes off of an uptrend, and it's telling you that uptrend is over, and it's moving into a downtrend. It's a reversal pattern. Looks very much like a head and shoulders. A head and shoulders would be just slightly different. It wouldn't have had the head peeking through the resistance. Now, same simple calculation. To calculate your target point would be simply when it broke through. And as you can see on here, it's not as pretty as it is on my diagrams. But when price moved up, down, up, down, up, down, it hit those top that hit that resistance and support level. When it broke that support level, that would have given you the sell signal, and you would have set your target point here, and you would have used that top resistance level as your stop loss point. So now you have your entry point, you have your stop loss, your take profit point. Now you just have to apply your risk management to see if you can afford to make that trade. Same holds true for a triple bottom. It's just the opposite of a triple top. Now, it's very, very important to look at two things when you're looking at chart patterns. It is the quality of the pattern or the quality of the trend that it is in. Because the more well-defined the trend, the better quality the pattern is going to be that's developed. Because you can have strong trends and you can have weak trends. You can have sideways messed up trends, you know, that are still moving up but all over the place like you have here on the right-hand side. Or you can have well-developed trends. When you have a well-developed trend and you get these chart patterns like you, you saw my live chart of gold, they are very, very accurate. Okay. They're still very dependable when you have weak trend. But when you're trading within a weak trend, you know, the markets can be all over the place. So I... I only look for high potential, high profitability, high probability trades. So therefore, I would only look for when a pattern develop in a well-defined trend. Now, breakouts happen either up or down. See, none of these patterns will guarantee us a breakout in either direction. And we also have weak breakouts and strong breakouts. A weak breakout means when it reached that point of breaking out, whether it's the triangle, the wedge, the pattern, when it broke out, it wasn't a, with any great decision. It just kind of eked through there, like, it, and then it fell back in. And then it kind of eked back out. Well, when you have a weak breakout, you might not want to actually trade that. Okay. You're looking for strong breakouts. Okay. Because that's going to show you that the breakout has momentum. So a pattern is said to have broken out once it has crossed either the support or resistance line. The pattern broke out in the same direction as the preceding trend. It's called a continuation pattern. If it broke out the opposite, it's called a reversal pattern. So as you see here, now this little chart that I have up there, I think I put it in your handout. Okay. But it's also available all over the internet. I didn't make it up. But we have falling wedges. We have bullish rectangles. We have bullish pennants, um, rising wedges. And the, the calculations are always the same. And you can see where you put your stop loss, your target point, your entry level. And they're each slightly different as, as where your entry level, but your entry level is at the breakout point. When it breaks out in the direction and it has a strong breakout, your target point and your stop loss point are also... And I've explained it all to you in your handout. So you have some very specific ways to understand this. And I'd like to thank you very much for joining us tonight. And please, I'll give you a second to download those um, handouts so you have all of this spelled out. But my most favorite of all of it is trading triangles. 
They're easy to trade. They're very dependable. And all you're seeing is the psychology of the market. The buyers and sellers are getting pent up into this little apex of the triangle, and they have to break out one way or another. Another way to confirm your breakouts is by looking at volume. Okay, If you get a weak breakout, but volume is very strong, that's telling you the markets are waiting for, we're waiting for that breakout. And now they're ready to jump in and push that momentum up. Okay. So momentum should always be tied or breakouts. You should always be looking at volume to get confirmation and then looking at support and resistance through other means, whether it's Fibonacci levels, pivot points, or eyeballing support and resistance will also help you because you'll see there's a lot of commonality between the breakouts and the apex of the triangle at a support and resistance level. So combine those together, you have a great, perfect trading strategy. So on that note, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Thank you once again for joining us. And go to www.ubcfx.com and go use their academy. And they have lots and lots of information on charts and chart patterns. Have a good night now. And again, thank you for supporting UBCFX. Good night now.